Hello everyone, my name is Panda and welcome to the ultimate new player's guide for Dead by Daylight Mobile. In this video, I'm going to try and teach you all the things that you need to know to get started in the game and get you having some fun in the fog. So getting started, you can download the game with the link in the description or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now. And once the game is installed and you've made yourself a username, make sure to select that you are brand new to the game and it will offer you up the tutorials. Now you should absolutely do all of these. There are three tutorials, the survivor tutorial, the killer tutorial and the advanced killer tutorial. And by completing these, it will unlock some characters for you and also give you some currency to be able to upgrade and buy some items. And while you're doing these, I just want to stress a few things that are really important that I see a lot of new players not quite understand. So first off, as a survivor, when you are sprinting around, not walking, not crouching, but when you are sprinting, you are leaving little scratches behind you that the killer can track you with. Now you cannot see these as a survivor, but the killer can. So survivors do quite often run around a lot of the time, not realizing they're leaving these breadcrumbs behind them and knowing when to walk instead of running is a huge part of not getting found and most likely not getting killed. This is what the scratch marks look like when a survivor is sprinting from the killer point of view, but from the survivor point of view, they can see no scratch marks at all. Second up, fast actions. While sprinting, if you vault over a window or over a pallet or enter a locker, it will create a loud noise notification and show the killer exactly where that happened. To the survivor, it looks like you're just jumping through a window, but to the killer, it looks like this. So again, this is another way to avoid being tracked quite so easily by the killer, allowing you to stealth around and stay alive. Next on the list, we have finding objectives. As the survivor, your objective is to find generators and to repair them. And on every single map, there are seven generators dotted around the map. You only have to finish five of these generators to power up the exit gates and be able to escape. And some great tips to be able to find these generators is looking up in the sky. So generators have these poles with floodlights attached to the top of them. If you're looking around and you see floodlights sticking up, that is where a generator is. It's important to keep your eyes open and look around for these because finding generators can be tricky, especially when there are only three left on the map. Also, when near a generator that has some progress on it, you will see this visual indicator when you can hear it, letting you know where it is. That way, if a teammate has worked on the generator a bit, you'll be able to find it a lot easier. Next up, let's talk about skill checks. When you're working on a generator or healing someone else, you will periodically get skill checks pop up on your screen. A sound cue will happen before the skill check pops up, and it's really quite important to try and land the skill check in the success zone. If you do not land it in the zone, it will knock back the generator or the heal that you're performing, but more importantly, it will provide one of those loud noise notifications to the killer so they will know where you are and they'll probably come over and try and chase you. So perfecting skill checks is a big part of survival here. And next up, we have hooks. When the killer has knocked down a player after hitting them twice or using an ability to knock them down, the killer is required to pick up the survivor and carry them to a hook. Now, in my many years and thousands of hours playing Dead by Daylight, one of the big issues that I see is that survivors do not save the teammates once they've been put on a hook. If you save your teammates, then they're back in the game. They can do objectives. You can heal them up. But if you leave them on the hook, they will eventually die. And while that may seem tempting to keep on working on generators or opening chests, it really is super important that you go and save the survivors from the hooks. You don't have to do it instantly. It can be good to wait a little bit. But if you do not save them, your team will really suffer because at the end of the day, four brains is better than three. Assuming that the survivors get saved, every survivor gets three hooks. The third hook means you're dead and you're out of the game. And if you manage to complete all five generators, the exit gates will be powered. Take note of these icons popping up on the screen after the generator is done. These will allow you to know where the two exit gates are. And this is the only opportunity you'll get to see where they are. Navigate your way to one of these gates, open it up and escape to get your victory. And as a survivor, it's really important to know that you will die. <laughs> there are gonna be so many opportunities where you die and escape is not gonna happen. You know, it's called Dead by Daylight and you are definitely going to die. Do not be discouraged though. You will still get blood points. You will still level up your characters from dying and it's all a part of the game. Remember at the end of the day, this is an asymmetrical game. So when you die, the killer wins. If you could always escape, the killer would always lose. And if you always died, the killer would always win. So there's definitely going to be times where both things happen. So now that I've covered the very basic ways that the game essentially works and the systems in place, let's have a look at what you're going to do once you've done the tutorials. Once you're on the main menu for the first time, there are a lot of things lit up and a lot of things that you can do. Now, of course, I suggest going through all of these different menus and checking them out. 
But importantly, if you go to the Daily Rituals tab, and in the starter section, you will see a couple of missions. One is to play one game of Survivor, and one is to play one game of Killer. And when you've finished one Survivor game, you will unlock Claudette Morel, and when you've finished one Killer game, you will unlock the Hillbilly. And completing all of these really sets you off in a good direction to getting to grips with the game. And there are also beginner tasks here, which will give you some rewards for just completing some objectives by playing the game. And really useful rewards for completing these are these tickets that you get, survivor tickets and killer tickets. And these allow you to unlock killers and survivors for 24 hours for free. And before we jump into the characters, I want to suggest that you go to the mail icon in the bottom left and redeem your rewards. In here you'll get some goodies, 10,000 iridescent shards, 150,000 blood points, 20 sinister stones, and some skins for your characters. Now take care of these iridescent shards, these are precious and these are used for unlocking characters, and I strongly suggest you do not spend these until you figure out a character that you want to unlock. The 10,000 shards is only enough to unlock one character to begin with, but you will earn more of these shards by playing the game as you go on. Okay, so killer and survivor. Listen, I'm going to be completely honest here, okay? Survivor is a much more relaxed playstyle. The killer is only in one place on the map at the time. However, killer is a much more intense and hands-on experience. It's a battle against time to stop the survivors before they repair the generators. And you need to really keep your eyes open at all times and be aware of what's happening around you. The first killer that you start off with is the Trapper. He is the signature of Dead by Daylight. And essentially, he is just a guy with some bear traps. Unsurprisingly, you place these traps around the map and if a survivor runs into them, they get trapped. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg because there are 19 different killers in Dead by Daylight and every single one of them is vastly different from the other. Where survivors are essentially all the same, just looking different with some different perks, killers are all vastly different with different powers, different speeds and all sorts of different attributes. These range from the trapper to the huntress able to throw hatchets through the air, the doctor using electric shocks to stun the survivors, the clown tossing intoxicating bottles around the map to slow survivors, and the nurse who has the ability to blink and teleport through solid objects and really is quite tricky. And along with their powers, each of these killers also has their own specific perks. So I really do suggest on each different killer, pressing the information button, having a look at their perks, also having a good look at their power and also checking out their speed, their terror radius, and their height. Now this may seem quite overwhelming but there is help out there. By navigating to the events page and clicking on activity there are trial characters every day. So there will be a set of characters, killers and survivors that are free for you to play every single day which will allow you to get to grips with characters without actually having to purchase them and there are also missions to play these characters and receive rewards. So regarding getting started with characters and which characters to pick, well I mentioned before perks and the fact that each different character has their own three perks but they are not just specific to each character. We have teachable perks. So leveling up any character, killer or survivor to level 20, 30 and 40 will unlock the perks specific to that character and make them available to find when leveling up any other character. So for example, if you were to level up Meg, who I think is a really good choice at the start, she's got three very good perks, Quick and Quiet, Sprint Burst, and Adrenaline. If you get her up to level 40 and you unlock the teachable perks, that means that you could go and then level up Dwight or another character of your choosing, and while leveling them up, you will be able to find Meg's perks while leveling. So essentially, if you got to the point where you've leveled every character to level 40, then every single perk in the game would be available to you on every single different character. And that is true, of course, to both survivors and to killers. So while I think Meg is a really good choice to level up first as a survivor to get her perks, and over on Killer, I really do quite like the perks of the Trapper, the original character, so I do suggest getting him to level 40 first. But after Trapper, when you're trying to find out a new killer, definitely take a look at the teachable perks. I think that getting started, the Doctor has some really good perks. The Doctor has Monitor and Abuse. This reduces your terror radius, so the heartbeat radius that the survivors can hear. This will make it easier for you to sneak up on survivors before they know that you're there. And also Overcharge. When you kick a generator, the next survivor to touch it gets a very hard skill check, which to be fair, they will probably miss, and it knocks the generator back even more, stopping them from completing them, and also letting you know where they are when they fail the skill check because it will give you a loud noise notification. Other characters with great perks are the clown, although he is quite difficult to play, so does the spirit, and also the nurse. But again, the nurse, definitely a highly technical and tricky killer to play. I definitely do not recommend playing the nurse as a new player. You may flourish and take to it well, but it is definitely tricky and requires practice. 
I suggest maybe wait until the nurse comes up on the daily free trial characters and then playing some games to try and get to grips with her. And keep in mind, you can play against bots with killers, so you can test them out against bots. No one's going to judge you. You know, you can fail, you can succeed. You can really get to grips in a non-stressful environment and just try and figure out how everything works. So once you're situated and you're playing away and you understand how the game works, it's definitely important to look at the daily rituals and also the weekly rituals these are quests that will give you great bonuses and it also acts as a bit of a guide to teach you different characters and different playstyles. Now if you do find a ritual on here that you don't think you're going to be able to complete or it just doesn't seem like something you're going to enjoy, feel free to refresh it by clicking the free button. You can do this once on every quest every day, however you will require currency to refresh it again so I suggest only re-rolling it if you really need to. But of course daily missions, refresh daily and weekly are weekly, you can see in the top right corner how long it is till they reset. Now, apart from the experience that you get to level up your killers and your survivors themselves, allowing you to unlock more perk spots and your journey towards level 20, 30, and 40 for the teachables, it's important to look at the blood market. And this is where you spend the blood points. And you will have been talked a little bit through this with the tutorial, but I just want to highlight a few things here. There are separate killer and survivor blood markets, and the blood points that you earn can be spent on either one of these. Now on the killer blood market, you will only be able to unlock add-ons to improve your killers of killers that you currently own. And this does not include any killers that you've unlocked with the 24 hour free trial tickets or the daily trial characters. Now on your adventures through the blood market, make sure you keep an eye out for the items that will give you experience for your characters. They have various names and different qualities and these will really be vital to leveling up your characters without having to necessarily play games with them. And when it comes to Survivor going through the blood market, I really do suggest personally, personal experience, that med kits are the best. Without having to find another teammate out there to heal you or to use a perk, like Claudette Morel's self-care, which allows you to heal yourself, a med kit will allow you to just heal yourself on your own and it does it pretty quick. And other equipable items out on the blood market for Survivor, you've got toolboxes, which allow you to repair generators faster for a small period of time. They also unlock the ability to destroy hooks out in the map. Now this can be super important if you can manage to sabotage a hook as the killer is carrying the survivor to them, but this is definitely a high tier maneuver and definitely risky. Additionally, we have flashlights for shining in the killer's eyes. These again can be a very high tier move. If the killer is picking up a survivor and you shine the flashlight in their eyes, it will make them drop the survivor. And there are also maps and keys. Maps which allow you to see generators and other objects that you've walked past and keys which allow you to open the hatch. Now one thing I want to explain is the end game collapse and the hatch. So once you've done all the generators and you've opened the exit gates, you will see a big bar at the top of the screen and this will be a countdown timer. If you do not leave the match, by the time that bar gets to the bottom, you will be sacrificed to the entity and you will die 100%. And if you are the last player left in the match, the hatch will open for you. And this is a final escape route for just one survivor. If you can manage to find the hatch, you do not need to open the gates and you do not need to exit you can jump through it. However, look out, the killer can also find the hatch and can kick it closed. Now, a big thing about DBD Mobile is the ability to team up with friends and to also squad up. If you are jumping into this game and you have some friends that you play games with, I really do suggest jumping in with them as well because Survivor in this game is best played with friends. And you can even create a squad with your friends to get extra bonuses when you play together. However, if you're playing on your own, there is a global chat. You can use this to chat to other people, find teammates, form squads and make a team of people that you feel confident with. Now let's talk about those iridescent shards that we got from the mail that I mentioned earlier. These shards are enough to unlock one killer or one survivor of your choice. And as you can do this for free, I think it's really important that you make an informed decision there. Now it may be tempting to just grab a killer that looks fun or that you like the sound of or you like the look of, but it really is beneficial to hold on to these, play some of the daily trial characters, figure out something you like. If you do like the look of a killer, for example, if you really like the aesthetic, of the trickster, then perhaps use one of the free killer tickets that you earn from doing the beginner tasks. And this will give you more than enough time to play the character, get to grips with it, and figure out if it matches your playstyle. So with these tips that I've provided you today, I feel like you should be able to get in there and have a good grip on the game. Persevering with the beginner tasks and the daily quests and weekly quests will give you resources that will enable you to level up and progress in the game. And always keep in mind that you definitely will not be able to win every single game that you play, either as killer or survivor, and keep the game's tagline in mind, death is not an escape. I hope this video has helped you out and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a wonderful day. Panda out.